the Caterham 420R. And I'm good with road and racing to Laura Thompson. And together we're about to take on what is arguably one of motorsport's most enjoyable races, the Auto Solo. you a little bit about this car. It's the Caterham 7, as they all are, and it's the 420R edition. Now that R just means it's a race equipped version, complete with carbon fibre bucket seats, a roll cage, four point harness, limited slip dip and sort of suspension. And as for the 420, well that's its brake horsepower per ton ratio. And in this instance, that's achieved thanks to its 550 odd kilogram weight and its 210 brake horsepower that it puts out from the 2 litre Ford Duratec engine under the bonnet. As you can imagine, it's brilliant fun with all of that sheer unadulterated power being put out to the rear wheels via this short throw five speed manual box. I've been driving it for the weekend, I'm just about to get to grips with it. But now I'm arriving at the Goodwood Motor Circuit on what should be my day off in order to take on the Goodwood Road and Racing Club Auto Solo. Now, I've never done one before. I've heard that it's a series of short slaloms, about 400 metres long each, and the idea is to get through each as quickly as possible. As I mentioned, I've never done one, and I've certainly never driven a caterham in anger before, so here goes nothing. Wish me luck. So I'm back in the pits after my first attempt at an auto solo and I've got to admit, I didn't do great. But given that I only climbed into this car two days ago and have spent pretty much yesterday getting to grips with it, I'm quite happy with my progress. So compared to some of my opponents, I perhaps didn't perform as I should have immediately. Um, I got straight out on track and overshot one of the cones and had to reverse and came back with a slightly shameful time of 94 seconds. To put that into perspective, the Golf, you see next to me, that got a time of, I believe, 76 seconds. However, we had three goes at it and they only took the best two into account. The second time around, I did slightly better, but still, again, overshot one of the cones and also didn't stop in the boxes for long enough. So the first time I got told I stopped too long in the boxes, second time didn't stop long enough. But that's not gonna deter me because I'm gonna call this car Goldilocks because third time lucky, I got a time of 77.88, which is on a par with some of my opponents. Given that I've only been driving it for about 24 hours, I'm quite happy with that. I've got three more courses to go through, so fingers crossed my times improve. So my name's Jack Houndsham. Um, I'm here at the Goodwood Auto Solo. Um, this is my car, um, classic Mini. I've had it since I was 16 years old. It was my first car. Uh, myself and my dad restored it in the garage. Um, since then, it's not, my, not, not now my daily driver, but um, we use it for like, events like this, um, a few track days and bits and pieces. Originally, it was a 1275. Um, I've done a lot of work to the engine. It's now a 1310. Uh, changed the cam in there. Did some porting work on the cylinder heads. I'm not sure on the exact power that it puts out. Uh, thing is, with a day like today, it's mainly all about the handling. So I'd say for an auto solo, you really don't need anything fancy. I mean, you can walk around the paddocks here and you see all sorts of cars. People pick up cars for a couple of hundred pound, um, you know, on the Friday and on the Sunday, they're out here at the Auto Solo competing with it. So, and they've got just as much of a smile on their face as those who have got, you know, 30 or 40,000 pound Porsches here. So that's the really great thing about the Auto Solo. There's all sorts of machinery out here. I'm just back in from round three of four that we're doing today and that one has hands down been my favourite. So that was magic that we did this morning but in reverse so we started with a very fast stretch before doing a loop and then coming back down towards the pits. The course is absolutely perfect for this car and as you can see after removing the doors I'm suitably windswept. Now I mentioned earlier about all the varied cars that are taking part and it really is testament to exactly how inclusive this event is. Providing you're a GRRC member, you have a roadworthy car with an MOT and you can drive it here, you can take part. So there's all kinds of cars that I'm competing against today. I mean, there's the likes of Fiat Pandas, for example, Porsches, 
MR2s and there's an Austin Healey replica with the mini engine next to me here. We're about to head back out on track for our fourth and final session of the day, so I checked back in, but all I can say so far is this is the most fun I've ever had in a car. So that's the day over. Four out of four track sessions complete and the weather has, for the most part, held. Now, I've got a tea, I'm warming up ever so slightly and I'm looking back and I have to say that's been one of the most fun experiences I've ever had on four wheels. It's a brilliantly organised event with a wonderful atmosphere and an excellent selection of cars. There's no rivalry among the competitors and everyone is more than happy to give you a hand out. I've had people pointing the right way around the course and telling me the tips and tricks needed to get my time down as low as possible. And as the racing itself, it is so much fun. It's effectively a giant slalom, apart from instead of doing it on foot, you're doing it in a rear wheel drive 175 horsepower car, at least in my case. This thing has been skidding and sliding into every single little bend that I could find. And I have learned a lot about car control in just a few short hours. All I can say really is I can't wait till the next one and I might even enter it in my own car.